Hi guys, welcome back to Caterpillar Cross Stitch. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Sean, and in today's video, we are gonna be looking at four different ways that you can organize your threads for a project. The methods that we're gonna be looking at today are bobbins, thread drops, floss away bags, and thread organizers. We are gonna be looking at the pros and possibly the cons on all of the different methods to help you decide on which method is for you. Before jumping into this video, we would love for you to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future uploads. So starting with the first method, let's jump right in with bobbins. Bobbins are small, which is great if you don't have a lot of room for your stitching supplies, you can purchase these little containers. Now this one in today's video is not a DMC bobbin storage container, but it is very similar. And as you can see, the bobbins fit really nicely into the storage container. At the top, you can see a hole, and this is for adding your bobbins onto a ring holder. So you may not necessarily want to work out of your container, you might just be working with a few colors for your project, and you want to work from a ring holder. So you can easily add your bobbins onto a ring holder, making it really easy when you're working. Now for today's demonstration, I'm gonna be using DMC 310, and I am gonna be showing you how you can add your thread onto the bobbin. So to start with adding your thread onto the bobbin, I like to hook the end part of the thread into the slit and then begin winding the thread as evenly as, and flat as possible. Now there is a little tool that can assist with adding your thread onto the bobbins, as I think one of the cons to bobbinating is that it can be quite time consuming when adding the thread onto the bobbin, but there is a little tool. I personally have not used it before, but I believe it does help with getting that thread onto the bobbin in a quicker time. Now, something to mention, which I think is quite important, and it is down to personal preference, but bobbins do create kinks in your thread. So if that is something that would bother you, then maybe bobbins isn't for you. But there are plenty of stitches that use this method and enjoy it very much. Moving on to floss away bags. Just like bobbins, you can buy these in bulk. And one thing I like about floss away bags is that they keep your threads clean. You can also put any off cuts into the bag, super easy. There is no winding it back onto the bobbin or anything and I like to add some card into the bag to give them a bit more of a structure. You can easily see what's inside the bag and you have this area where you can add the number on what's inside. I would say the only downfall to a floss away bag, which is the same as plastic bobbins, is that they are plastic. But I think there are so many different ways you can use these little bags and they are super long lasting as well. You can also fit more than one thread into a bag, which helps if you don't have much storage space or want a limit on how many bags you want to use. I personally like floss away bags and although I don't use them whilst working with my projects, they are the method I use for storing my threads long term in my stash. Next we have a thread drop. You can purchase these already pre-made ready for use, but you can also make them yourself. I like to make my own because I have a Sizzix machine, but you don't need a machine to make a thread drop. There are other methods to creating them, but the thread drops I am showing you in today's video, I have made with my Sizzix machine. Now, thread drops are normally made from a thick card and will have a large hole at the bottom for where your threads will go. And there will also be a hole at the top for where you can add them onto a ring holder. So to organize my thread onto my thread drops, I like to separate the skein into one big strand of thread and then I begin to half it until I reach a certain length which suits my stitching. Now I'm a stitcher who likes to use the loop method, so I like to have my strands to be twice the size or twice the length that I actually need. Once I have reached the perfect length for my stitching, I then loop the thread onto the thread drop. Then I cut any loops in the thread because this will allow me 
to remove a strand from the thread without actually removing the skein from the thread drop. Now this makes this method really appealing to me as it makes things super quick and easy when trying to gain access to my next thread. Once I have completed my project, the thread drops don't go to waste as I add them into their floss away bags back in my stash ready for when I next need that thread drop and I already have the thread drop already ready to go, ready for the next project. Moving on to the last method, and this is a thread organizer. Now I'm sure many of you will be familiar with the Caterpillar Cross Stitch Tree Organizer. This is a great tool for when you have multiple colors, and this works the same as a thread drop, but instead of having them individually on cards, you have them all in one place. There are different type of thread organizers and having all your threads in one place can really be such a time saver as you only ever need to refer to one centralized place to access your threads. Now you can get all sorts of different thread organizers available ranging from organizers which can hold lots of threads for those bigger projects or thread organizers which come as part of the kit such as the new Caterpillar Cross Stitch kit thread holders. If you're new to Caterpillar Cross Stitch and want to learn more about how the threads are organized in the kits, then we will leave down below a video which is less than two minutes, which will give you an insight as to how these work. One of my favorite things about the tree holder is that it's made from acrylic. And I think that's one of the pros to using these type of thread organizers is that they create such a structure for you when working with your threads day in, day out, they don't change their form. Whereas thread drops do, if you don't use strong enough card, it can start to make a difference to the holder. So that is definitely one of my favorite things about using these type of thread organizers. So there we have four ways that you can organize your threads for your projects. Now, we'd love to hear from you. Do you have a favorite method? Maybe we have mentioned the method here in today's video, or do you use various methods depending on the project? If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like so that we know to create more content like this. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, we'll see you in the next one.